Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Hi, and welcome to the SEI Podcast Series. Uh, my name is Andy Hoover. I lead the Resilience Engineering Team here in the SEI's CERT Division at Carnegie Mellon University. I'd like to welcome my colleague, Katie Stewart. Katie is a senior engineer also in the SEI's CERT Division. And in today's podcast, we're going to focus on the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, or CMMC Level 3 Assessment Guide. Uh, first, we're going to tell our guests a little bit about ourselves. So again, I'm Andy Hoover. I've been at the SEI for about eight years. I mainly focus on cybersecurity architecture, cyber resilience, and critical infrastructure protection, which is how I got into the CMMC. Um, I've been a member of the model development team since the very beginning of the project. Katie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Katie Stewart. I've been with the SDI about seven years. Um, primarily focused on working resilience as well as measurement and analysis. Um, like Andy, I've been involved with this DMMC model team since the beginning. Um, and I'm really excited to continue the discussion around assessment guides. Okay, cool. Thanks, uh, Katie. So for the members of the audience who are new to CMMC, we've done um, a bunch of blog posts, webcasts, podcasts, and other things that provide really good overview of CMMC and the work we've done on it. Um, so we'll link to all of those resources in the transcript of this one so, so people can find it. So let's get started on the podcast for today. Today, we're going to discuss the CMMC Level 3 Assessment Guide. Our last podcast, we, we, um, we did a deep dive into the Level 1 Guide. Today, we're going to primarily focus on the differences between the Level 1 Guide and the Level 3 Guide. So as I said, uh, we have a previous guide that focuses um, on a Level 1, and we talked about organizations at Level 1 are only authorized to store, process, transmit federal contract information. That's FCI data. And so therefore, the level one guide only focuses on protecting FCI. One of the major differences in the two guides is that CMMC level three, an organization um, is authorized to store, process, and transmit controlled unclassified information, or CUI. So that's the big difference and the big distinction between the two guides. But Katie, can you tell us a little bit more detail not only about FCI and CUI, but also the distinction between the guides? Yeah, so when we talked last time about the level one guide, you know, you, you did a really good job stressing how important it is to read the upfront matter, right? So if, if our listeners have gone and done that with the level three guide, um, or the level one guide, and then they open the level three guide, they'll see a primary difference, you know, immediately um, in, in the guide. Um, so first and foremost, the level three guide has detailed information specifically around scoping a level three assessment. And Andy just explained that, right? So a level three assessment is, you know, looking to get certified to process, store, and transmit CUI. So an organization can think about achieving a level three certification for two different use cases. Okay, so I assume, Katie, that the first use case is the entire enterprise, right? Basically, an organization would have CUI spread out everywhere across their enterprise, thus the whole enterprise is in scope. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And then, so then if you think about use case number two, this would be where, you know, an organization would for transmit and process CUI within an enclave. Um, and perhaps they, you know, have FCI in their entire enterprise boundary, but they've really, you know, sectioned off in this enclave where they're going to handle CUI. Okay, so that's interesting. So in that scenario, then, just so that I understand it, the entire organization would have like a level one CMMC certification because they have FCI data, but then they have segmented off some systems where they store, process, transmit CUI data, and, and 
that enclave is the only area that would be applicable to the level three certification, right? Because that's where the CUI is. Yes, exactly. And, you know, we encourage organizations to really think through, um, you know, how they're going to, to segment their network for um, these certifications. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's a that's a really important concept. And there's a lot of interest in that. So we're we're definitely going to deep dive into that in a future podcast where we talk about Appendix A and scoping the assessment. So, Katie, um, can you tell us what else makes the level three guide different from the level one guide? Yeah. So building off of, you know, the boundary discussion that we had earlier, um, you know, when an organization receives a level three certification, that means that they are authorized to process, transmit and source the UI. And the reason why is because they meet all of the 110 security requirements that are outlined in this 171. Now, the CMMC model, if you've listened to our other podcasts or are familiar with the model, um, there are additional requirements on top of that. But fundamentally, the ability to have CUI is given because they meet all 171 security requirements. And those are all outlined in the level three assessment. Okay. And so just to be clear here, when we say satisfied, we mean that the organization has successfully implemented that practice, right? Yeah, that's that's right. And and as we talked about before, when we say you've implemented a practice, that actually means that you have satisfied all the defined assessment objectives for that specific practice. Um, and just like in the level one guide, um, for the 171 CMMC practices, those assessment objectives will be verbatim from this special pub 171 alpha, which again is the assessment methodology for, for NIST 171. Okay, good. And so that brings up the next point that I want to highlight, which is the next really big difference between the, the L3 guide. Do you want to go into, into it a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I kind of touched on it earlier. There, there are additional requirements, right? So it's not just what's in 171. Um, and those kind of fall into two categories. We have the introduction of Delta practices, which you'll see at levels two and three. So obviously they'll be in the guide, um, as well as process maturity. Right. So firstly, can you remind everyone what a Delta practice is? I mean, that's kind of like our, it's kind of like our internal term, right? So what, what, is, what, what do we mean when we say Delta practice? Right, right. It's kind of just the term we've, we've used to, um, we use it to describe the practices that are not verbatim from 171. So there are 20 practices at levels two and three, right? They're spread out over the two levels that we felt needed to be added to this DMMC model to kind of round it out um, for, for good cyber practices. Um, so you will see, you know, the, the assessment objectives um, and, and the objects and the methods, the, the structure will be exactly the same as um, the NIST 171 practices, but these were developed by you know the model team using some of our key references and in some cases um if we felt we needed to you know kind of add to it we developed it just you know as a model team but again the structure will be identical to the 171 alpha um, structure which is also the cmnc assessment guide structure right so that's the delta practices now something else to mention here i think is that Level two, we introduce process maturity, which carries over into levels three, four, and five. So levels two and three, you know, in this guide are going to have, you know, process maturity requirements as well. And the, when you say Delta practices, you said there's 20 of them. That does not include the process maturity um, practices. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So at level two, there's you know, two maturity processes for each domain. And then at level three, there's one for each domain. Now, we kept the structure the same, right? So for each of these process maturity processes, um, you know, we have defined assessment um, objectives as well as the methods and the objects. Um, and, and the discussion, right? So the process maturity component of CMMC will follow the same structure as the CMMC practices. 
Um, there's a lot of information in there, and I think it's really important for our listeners to think through, you know, how are they going to tackle process maturity? And the assessment guide is actually one of the key resources to start with because there is so much information around each of the maturity processes within CMMC. Right. All right. So just to summarize that, the 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 level two and three assessment guide is a great tool for organizations to kind of get a handle on and an understanding of how they're going to be assessed for process maturity in CMMC. That yeah, said, absolutely. and it's probably also useful for level one organizations, right? Because a lot of level one organizations will eventually progress or, or want to progress to a higher level. And so even if a organizations at level one, they've you know used the level one assessment guide to get there, they can use this guide to understand not only the practices that are required at levels two and three, including the Delta practices, but also the process maturity that's that's going to be there. You know, process maturity takes time, right? It takes time to implement, it takes time to institutionalize. And so the assessment guide is a great place to start, if not the best place for an organization that wants to implement process maturity you know, to get started um, in understanding what the requirements are. Absolutely. And, you know, just like the practices, we list out, um, you know, the artifacts and, you know, those people that could be interviewed um, and, and things that could be examined, um, which really helps, I think, clarify the types of, you know, activities that need to go into prepping for, you know, the process maturity component of the CMMC assessment. Yeah, well, you know, Katie, this was a, a great overview of the differences between the level three guide and the level one guide. Really appreciate your time here. Um, and then I'm really looking forward to the deep dive into the scoping appendix, which you know I think is gonna be really helpful um, you know, as organizations start implementing these things. Absolutely, I, you know, it's one of the most important concepts around um, the CMMC assessment, so it should be a good discussion. Okay, Katie, thanks again for being here. Um, as a reminder to the audience, we'll include the links in the transcript to the other podcasts and, and the other um, content that we mentioned. Uh, stay tuned for more podcasts fo focusing on CMMC. The next one will focus on the um, Appendix A or the Scoping Appendix. And um, you know, as always, if there are any questions, reach out to Katie or I through the SCI email at info at sci.cmu.edu, or you're welcome to uh, find us on LinkedIn. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.